and I work in uh, Unidade de Arqueologia of the University of Minho in Portugal and I'm going to present, present our ex-creation, uh, our, uh, our uh, experience with uh, um, digital data in archaeology. And digital data is all that can be represented in digital form. Okay. And archaeology works with data in different formats, and some data are born digital, and some need to be converted uh, from analog formats. Uh, in the in our uh, archaeology, archaeology unit, we uh, uh, at the age of 70s, data dissemination process in archaeology involves significant challenges. At 19s, dissemination of information was made by paper, and uh, at this decade, the decade we began to um, to publish uh, our data in a digital form, and uh, at twenties, uh, much of the information was uh, web-based data delivered dissemination. So we had a long work uh, and many challenges was made in our unity. New digital, uh, new digital data collection like images and vectorial draws involves an exponential uh, growth. Before the age of 20, each project occupied only a few hundreds of megabits, and now we have some gigabits for our project, so we have to think about what data to store and uh, how to, to store those data. So why do you spend time and resources to store data in digital formats? Digital format allows long-term data preservation. It's a strong reason. But however, we must also consider that a lot of data does not mean much information. We must understand the data and the relations between data to get more information and rich knowledge. Uh, if we have, if we have a database with uh, uh, medical data, we are not, we uh, does, don't make me a, do a doctor, but uh, if we uh, understand the data and the relationships of the, the, the data, we can uh, have information and rich knowledge. This is our, our database structure. Um, all the data that we collect during the archaeological process are stored in a database uh, whose basic structure uh, is shown in the picture. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we have a database in a MySQL and we develop two applications, a back office application in uh, PHP, MySQL, and a front office uh, application. During the excavation process, all the stratigraphics, uni units, artifacts, image, vectorial draws are linked between, between them and stored in the, in the database. Um, over the years, a number of good and bad project practice have emerged as a guide. So, uh, 
we think that it's important to have a good structure uh, of data. Um, we work a lot uh, on the normalization of the data and uh, to create um, descriptors uh, that are used in the, in the forms. We also uh, normalize vector register um, and had uh, metadata with uh, with those uh, vectorial draws. How our uh, investigator have access to the to the database um, from uh, front office uh, application that is available intranet, uh, where you can have access to the all images of the the excavation process, all the vectorials, uh, vectorial draws that are made like plants, uh, plants and profiles, and of course you have access to the uh, alphanumeric data of the characterization of the, the stratigraphics, uh, units, uh, artifacts. So, uh, with, the, with the, the, those uh, tools, you can uh, access to the information and you can uh, do reports that uh, archaeologists have made to the government. Um, we uh, uh, have already um, a, a site, a front office to the public in general, to assess to this, uh, to this data. Which archaeological site, the web based, has a detailed description of the records uh, and uh, as well the studies and publications that are made about the, the each site. Our uh, back office application uh, was used uh, in the um, archaeology unit uh, in the Universidad Minho, but we uh, are test this uh, application with um, sorry I must go back we are testing this application with exter ex external uh, entities in Spain and uh, in Portugal um, we think that nowadays we use information technologies like our ancestors create uh, different tools uh, and they uh, shape the tools not only to the, the task they want but also to their hand. So uh, information technologies are more and more specialized and more and more complex and with different functions and we must use uh, these tools to uh, analyze our data in different, in different points of view. Uh, so it is important that the archaeological records could directly analyze the data, but also um, they can be, the data can be submitted to some tools according to the task uh, we want. I'm going to present two examples of external applications that uh, use our data that are stored in our databases in different cases. Uh, the first is uh, uh, an example of how we can combine data between uh, graphic mode and alphanumerical data in the database. This is uh, in our in our uh, back office application. Uh, all data are entered in database uh, using a form uh, designed in PHP that store data in a MySQL database. 
this is the form where we register the relationships between stratigraphics uh, units and uh, this is a form where uh, you put data about ceramics. During the excavation process, we only uh, and you, you, we only have a few uh, attributes, but later uh, some specialists that are studying ceramics are uh, uh, entering uh, new detailed data about the the, the ceramic and. Uh, with the information of relations between uh, stratigraphics contexts and uh, the information of the device, with our shared, we design uh, the graph of stratigraphics uh, units, exporting this graph to uh, geographic information systems or a CAD. Uh, we have the same graph, but uh, we can link the uh, stratigraphic name with data and in this case we have different color for different type of um, stratigraphic units and I can link the stratigraphic uni units with artifacts. In this case I can see uh, what kind of ceramics are in each stratigraphic uh, units with uh, information like the, the type of ceramic, uh, the chronology, uh, whatever. I can do this with coins, with uh, glasses, uh, and I have uh, um, a graphic view of distribution of materials and uh, stratigraphics units. This is uh, one example of how important it is to have data and to have access to data to, uh, that can be reused later after the excavation process. We can reuse the data with different, um, with different tasks. This is an, um, another example of using information. In the database, we uh, store image of the uh, excavation process of the, the ore um, in the uh, archaeological archite architecture uh, of the facades. So, um, our back of office application allows us to store draws and image. However, uh, the 2D representation of 3D archaeological entities generates, generates some loss uh, of information. Uh, various computer vision techniques uh, such uh, as stratiform motion or dense stereo reconstruction algorithms uh, are used for recovering 3D shape and the periods of archaeological objects in some uh, archaeological excavation. It is recommended that uh, to shoot uh, at least one look of sequential photos in, in uh, small increments uh, and these uh, photos uh, are uploaded and aligned by the software to create uh, a 3D, po a 3D point uh, cloud uh, based on uh, stratiform motion. The final uh, point cloud uh, is processed to create a textured 3D uh, uh, surface uh, as you can see on the, on the image. This is the pipeline of the sequence but uh, uh, it's a, a, a easy process of obtaining uh, uh, a 3D um, model uh, based on images. Uh, besides architectonic uh, structures, it is also possible to apply this procedure to other archaeological elements. In this case, uh, 
the archaeological record was carried out over the uh, rock carved element uh, in boutiques in the northeast part of Portugal. We have uh, some graphic graphs in the, in the rock and uh, you can manipulate the 3D uh, model and see uh, the, the, the design uh, on the rock. The visualization toolkit is an open source, freely available software. It is designed to be a platform agnostic and it should be possible to compile and run it uh, about anywhere. The software system is most, mostly used for visualization tools, for <laughs> computer graphics uh, and uh, 3D interaction. The general, uh, the central structure of visualization toolkits uh, began with the with the initial data. Then you can apply filters and mapping to uh, obtain the three D actors. The properties model uh, is then used to adjust visible properties like transparency or color. Uh, of the actors before they are finally handled. Uh, this is uh, an example of you can uh, do uh, in these models like segmentation. There are some filters that you um, can implement it by, based on VTK features and we can uh, proceed with the segmentation of the 3D uh, surface into steps. First, uh, you mark uh, on the surface a set of points and the polygonal, uh, polygon marks will represent um, uh, the outer limit, limit of a new region. And second, uh, you can uh, use this polygon information in a filter to create a new subsurface. Another um, functionality that you can use is um, uh, to interactive uh, have a cross section of the, the, the model. Um, here, a uh, widget is used to um, interactively position the plan along the 3D data, and each time the widget stops, a cutting uh, procedure is used to um, to cut out the geometry that is uh, on the side of the widget arrow. The, pol the polyline that results from this section can also be uh, extracted. And uh, you can have an interaction with model. The virtual 3D reconstruction should work as a digital virtual mockup, uh, able to be disassembled uh, to better understand the volume of the structures and the way they relate with each other. Um, so, uh, in, in this, this was the second example I want to, to show. Uh, and in, con in conclusion, uh, we, we can have a lot of data but uh, it doesn't mean to have a lot of, of information. We need high quality, uh, high quality data and to have um, an effective cut form, uh, we need this uh, data uh, to be normalized and integrated uh, in the database. Digital data, um, 
enable long-term preservation and supports high quality research and verify, verify, verifiable uh, interpretation. The dissemination of data allows multiple studies using the same data and going forward one phase of intensive um, time and resource concerning to collect data uh, and to uh, processing and store those data. So uh, we think that we can we have to care about quality of data. We have to care about uh, to use um, a software that allows the dissemination of this uh, data that can be reused uh, later in uh, new uh, tasks. I'm sorry for my bad English. I assure you that my Portuguese accent is perfect. <laughs> Oh,